Okay, well, good morning. Tuesday morning. I uh, was in the house there trying to find some uh, pins. Pins, retaining clips, whatever you want to call them for uh, these printed circuit dashes in these old, uh, well, it's the same as in this old truck. It's in our backhoe. It's in our 2394 tractor. When you, I think it's in the 2394. Pretty sure it is. Uh, when you, uh, anyways, I'll show you when we get in the, in the shop. So I've been, when I phoned around, nobody knew what I was talking about and I didn't know how to explain it because I didn't know what it was called. Because I've been looking for it for a little while. Uh, and then I just finally sent some pictures off to actually a guy that gets molasses here. So he was involved in the parts world. So he said he was going to check that out. This tandem here, it needs this brake booster, we're pretty sure. So that actually showed up yesterday. So we're going to get that changed out today, I think. I was out here earlier, I plugged this tandem in, so hopefully it'll start. But the first thing we got to do is get the telehandler and the backhoe out of the shop. So the dash was cracked in it when we took it out. I just hold on, let me get over there. <clears throat> so this is the dash out of that 580 backhoe. It's a printed circuit dash. These clips I need, and I've, I've been looking for them on and off, haven't dedicated a whole bunch of time to it until yesterday when I took it out and I was like, I wonder... I bet you it would work if they were all in there. So a few were missing. Some of them are like loose like this one is. So it doesn't even make a good contact. And obviously it, the gauges can't work if these aren't all right. So I did message a guy that is involved. I don't even know how in the automotive industry, if he's a partsman or a manager or whatever he does. But I sent him a picture of these and I was like, can you actually, can you get these? Because <clears throat> of course, like everything else, they're available online in the States. But when you go to check out and go into sh like uh check for shipping i think the parts were like 15 dollars american and then the shipping was like 40 to 50 dollars and then lots of places didn't even ship to canada so i got frustrated and i just was like oh man whatever i might have to go down that route eventually but i just i wish canada could have anything it would be nice their whole reason this uh, old girl made it in here was brake issues so the these are the new cylinders we put in the old ones leaked really bad so when you came in here there would always be a big puddle of brake fluid down on the ground and you can imagine brakes are nice to have it was also just a nightmare my dad and buddy they took this all apart uh, this is all one piece this dash and it would have been nice if they could have left the front part separate from the sides because all your wires and switches go in there so you got to take all of that out take all of this off and then lift it off and uh, it was a nightmare but anyways they did get it so good on them uh, but yeah, it's nice to have brakes. These 580 backhoes, and I'm not exactly sure how many model numbers had the same style braking system, but it's, no matter where you look on the internet, uh, it's like unanimous that that was the worst braking system ever designed and then implemented in industry. It's just absolutely terrible. So they're always locking up or they don't hold or they leak or the, uh, it's just totally crazy. So hopefully, it's all new pads like we've done the brakes underneath there uh those what it, however it works it's it's all new plus those cylinder or cylinders are now new uh so hopefully it works but anyways i'm gonna put the dash in and then i'm gonna get this stuff out of here and go get that tandem and bring it in so we can do that master cylinder whenever my dad gets here it did show up at his house yesterday i guess yeah well good morning shifted into another day here i got uh I got a bunch of bags to make, so hopefully everything starts about minus 20 this morning. Although I just looked before I got out here. Claims it's already warmed up to minus 14, so. Those few degrees do, I find, make a big difference, especially in this older machinery. It's crazy when you watch uh, the new late model stuff. It seems to have, I don't know, different cranking ability. So it, uh, if it cranks over at all, it pretty much starts. This old stuff. It spins over for a while, and usually by then the batteries are dead. So hopefully they start, so I can just uh, just get with it. We did get the uh, well, the back was out of the shop, so that's pretty much all done. Uh, I found a guy in town actually to order me those little clips on the back, and we got the tandem in the shop. So we were doing that brake booster. Now I think we got to set up the brakes, so we'll do that once I get the bags made. Well, whatever, I guess. 
things were going good this morning. I got, what, seven bags made there? And then I was switching over to make this one when disaster struck. So I don't actually know what happened. Shear pin didn't blow. I think, I think what happened was the set screw down in that yoke fell out and then the key fell out. So it's just spinning on that shaft. And of course, uh, all that shaft does is carry the grain away from the hammers. So when it quit, the hammers were still going and the auger was still going. What it did was just pack in the ground peas. So I've already taken a bucket or two out of there. I'm going to fish in there with my hands. I'm going to get the rest of that out of there. Hopefully I can get that auger freed up and then I can get this turning so I can line the key that's in the, sh the keyway in the shaft and the keyway in the yoke. I got to line them back up and then tighten up my set screw. So you don't get uh, free ones every day. I've been expecting something to happen and I probably should have, I probably should have checked that. I guess I didn't, uh, I didn't think it, it needed to be, but I guess those set screws do back out. So I'm going to get in there and start fishing around with my hands, shovel all those what the heck was that ground peas out and uh and go from there well i got it cleaned up enough shoveled out enough i guess that you can finally see that auger and i got that yoke moving a bit so next step is to try to line it up to the shaft and see if i can get that <clears throat> the set screw that was loose and I think that uh, out, uh, that uh, key fell out. So, but it's all the way on the back side. And if I use the tractor to turn it over, I uh, I will be unsuccessful. Let's see if I can turn the PTO maybe without the tractor running. <laughs> I didn't blow any shear pins, that's why I say the only thing that makes sense is that key fell out. I'm going to try it again. See if it uh, has enough jam, I guess, to keep going. So that's how that works, too. I, I got those hammers disengaged. Normally, they'd be spinning at about a million miles an hour. And then that screen, either that one, or some of these smaller ones, you put it in there and it beats the grain through there with these hammers. So I'm going to get everything shut off, put that screen back in, and then fire it back up. Ah, oh, well, good evening. It's like almost six o'clock now. I know what a day that was. We got uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, that's only three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Guy's here for his feed right now. A couple of totes of molasses out today. And then we had to set it up like this. So there is a bit of a reason why we set it up like this. And I will, uh, I will explain that once I get this guy's bag loaded. All right, well, buddy's gone. Happily loaded up, off to feed his 4-H steer. And I got this roller put back so it dumps into the hammer mill. So the reason we move it out of the way is uh, <clears throat> when you're switching between different s livestock, so horses and chickens and pigs, and <clears throat> uh, sometimes the minerals that you mix in or whatever it may be, is not compatible. So what beef cattle can have, horses can't have, vice versa. Now we don't mix in too many extras. Uh, we have a few options, not a whole bunch. And that's because we do try to keep it simple and uh, it's like a little more natural, I guess. But uh, when we do our 50 pound bags, when we do our, or just big bags that are, you know, going exclusively to a horse place, we, uh, and, and especially if it's just rolled oats, 
we just move the mill right out because there's none of the supplement ever goes into that roller so you can avoid the uh all the flush requirements i guess but uh other than that you got to uh you got to flush the mill out and then make sure it's nice and clean and uh with as often as i do that it is easier to move the roller and just roll a ton of oats than try to roll it into there and unload it so i mean even this bag that's sitting right here <coughs> that's a bag of flush from, from the last time it, uh, it gets old i can tell you that it gets old cleaning that mill out 